another five minutes. If it's on time. Oh, it'll be on time, all right. Don't you worry. A million pounds worth of gold. <laughs> There's the leader, Anne. Ice! Banford Tower, to all aircraft in stack, reduce altitude 1,000 feet. Aeroflot 9 to Banford Tower. Landing one, zero, right. Get on time to three hours, ten minutes from Moscow. Let's see, B line six seven is next. Right. Start the smoke. <laughs> He's landed. I know he's landed, but he's sending me Mayday. Where's that smoke coming from? There's a truck out there. What's going on? I think he's being attacked. Sound a general alarm. General alarm, quadrant 11, runway 108. The Banford police, and hurry. Move it out, move it out. We're not window dressing, don't stack it, just get them in. No, they're not on fire. They're being attacked. Just get over there. All right, that's a lot. Out! Out! On board. They're getting away! They've got away. They're heading north. Security, they're heading north along the A134. We've done it. A million quids worth of gold. There's Kartsky. Couldn't have done better. 
7.15. Should have done it by now. 7,000? For the seven dwarves. Oh, I've got goosebumps all over. Oh, why? In case anything went wrong. Couldn't. I planned it. Oh, I wish I could be sure of myself. The way you are. I'm always afraid things will get fouled up. I mean, they always have for me. Till I met you. Come on. Got an alibi to establish. your breath away. You've got to hand it to him. Oh, jeez, what? <laughs> that truck they asked us to look for, what was it? The green four-tonner. We'll have a quick look. I should think so. I do apologize, Mr. Bailey. When you book three weeks in advance, you don't expect to mix up about the tickets, do you? Well, I'm very sorry indeed. I do hope you enjoy the show. Nobody takes his gloves off. The first one I catch barehanded, his money's cut by half. When we're through, you change into your own clothes, leave the clothes you've got on here. Now you four, with Len, change the tires on the truck. You three, hose it down. Every speck of airport mud, off. Well, the boss will be here soon. Let's have it all ready for him, shall we? Right. Back as soon as I can. Dad, I know what's wrong. Oh, well, you do, do you? It's the aerial. You're guessing. I can tell, will you not? Hundred percent guesswork. If you and Matthew would be content to look at this thing and stop fiddling with it all the time. It may be my fault, darling. I turned this room out today and I moved the set. I can fix it. Now look, the look quiet. I want to hear the sound. But, Dad, you should have... Blast, it's gone again. Look, get me a screwdriver. Dad, if you don't... It's a combination of line, hole and brightness. The one affects the other. Well, that's perfect. What do you do? Just this one. Gideon. 
sir, this is really something. A million pounds in gold bullion. A consignment from Russia to bullion dealers in London. There he is, right on the dot. Trust the professor. Don't laugh, mate. All those years teaching school developed his brain. Well, it went like a dream. Of course it did. I planned it. <laughs> Save it, we'll talk later. Right. Come on, gentlemen. Come and get it. Now remember, go home, go to bed. No boozing, no fancy spending, nothing that'll attract attention. Well, it was damn well organized. Split second schedule. Look, Lemmy, how many men do we know in this country could do a job as big as this? Well, there's um, Jiggers Enright. Yes, yes. Hatton, Slim Hatton, and who else? Well, it can't be more than 15 or 20. At the most. It's a good mind behind this, all right? Cool, trained. Look, let me make a list of the 20 or so men in England capable of pulling this job. Now, check them all thoroughly, where they were tonight. If necessary, have the places turned over. I'll get on to it right away. Oh, and find David for me, will you? I want him. Right. Well, now that we've got into the seven dwarves. <laughs> Len, get the clothes on the incinerator. Right, Professor. Tires going to the river. After we move the gold, of course. After we what? We're moving the gold. Come on, let's get unloaded. You mean there's something I don't know about? There's a lot of things you don't know about, Frank. <laughs> Come on. What about Kautsky? Think the cops got him? He doesn't know anything. But just in case. That's one of the reasons why we're moving. Description of the boxes and gold to all districts. Notify Interpol for a special watch in Switzerland, Holland, and India. Right. David, check all seaports. Airports and railway stations. Yes. All right, Len, get going. And keep Bamford in the picture, will you? Yes, sir. Well, they'll try to get out of the country, that's for sure. The question is how? A hundred boxes of gold ingots. Now, what would they do? Melt them down, probably. Yes, yes, and recast into anything. Car bumpers, brass bedsteads. Let's put ourselves in their position, shall we? You're in this, Kowski, up to your neck, and you know it. I don't know what you are saying. I tell you, I just borrowed this trash. Commander Gideon, this is Chief Superintendent Wilkes, Banford CID. Yes? Uh, what makes? Right. All right, thank you, Wilkes. I'll be up to see you first thing in the morning. Wilkes thinks that Kowski was used as a decoy, therefore the villains used an identical truck. And since Kowski was picked up heading north, it's pretty obvious the villains are heading south to London. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Uh, you find it. What do I do? Call out the army? Oh, look, I know it's not going to be easy. I want every constable to look in every garage, shed, builder's yard, anywhere they can hide a four-ton truck. Somewhere in London there's a green Bedford four-ton truck, and I want it. I better get started. That'll be him. Open up, boys. Come on, Frank. Don't be childish. If you don't want to tell me things, that's your business, isn't it? Greetings. Fellas, this is Harold. Len, Ace. Hello. This is, uh... Frank Dodson, you've heard me talking about. Hello. Now, don't be like that. Harold made all the arrangements at the airport. He's earned his cut, believe me. You should have told me. The less people that knew about it, the better. Now, go on, shake hands. That's the spirit. We're a team, remember? No room for internecine warfare. <laughs> what? Internecine. It means mutually destructive. Well, isn't that nice? Len, open one up. Let's have a look. Come on, Frank. pounds worth of gold. We'll see Kowski now. 
And no prints on the leader van? And no prints anywhere. And the crew confirmed that the whole gang wore gloves. Well, somebody handled it from the airport end, all right. Well, we're digging, sir. I've got eight men at the airport. Every single person who had anything to do with the movement of the Russian plane is being questioned. Come in. Sit down. Peter Kowski, born Poland. Naturalized, 1947. Married. One son. Lives at 22 Willis Street, Islington. Employed by General Builders Supply Company Limited. This is all a mistake. I'm just borrowing this truck last night, you understand? Borrowing? Yes, just for one night. I do this uh, small job for this friend of mine. I move these typewriters from Camden Town to Chelmsford. Have you checked this? Yes, sir. Bannington Typewriter Company, small family business. Kotsky's done odd jobs for them before. General Builders are a bit uh, put out about the truck, but they confirm that he's worked for them for four years. I don't say nothing about this last night, because I think, well, maybe I lose my job because of borrowing the truck. Uh, Mr. Kowski, there's just uh, one thing I don't understand about your story. You ask me, I tell you the truth. Well, if you were carrying typewriters from Camden Town to Chelmsford, well, what were you doing so near to Banford Airport? This I not tell you? This you not tell me. Last night I'm losing my way. Something terrible. The lights on that track are just... Terrible, terrible. All right, that's all. I can go now, yes? Yes, that's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is that wise, sir? And don't worry, he's too good to be true. He's in it all right, up to his eyes. I agree, but why let him go? Look, have him tailed. If he heads for London, advise Inspector Keen and we'll take over. Right, sir. This is taking too long. Frank, I told you before, it's a printer's crucible used for melting lead. But we're melting gold, aren't we? Or at least we're supposed to be. At this rate, it's going to take us ten years. The point is, dear heart, that the melting point of gold is 860 degrees, and lead is around 300. You ought to have won a Nobel Prize. Take it easy, mate. Let me tell you something, Harold. If this one thing makes me sick, it's another man putting his hand on me. It's the governor. Hello, Professor. Hello, lads. How's things? All right. Here, yeah. tea, sandwiches. Yeah, about time too, isn't it? Morning, Harold. Good night, Terry. How's Frankie this morning? Oh, I'm okay. You should be. You're famous. Newspapers describe the man that led the band for Gold Raid as a brilliant commander. Yeah? He's mm. coming along nicely, isn't he? Harold? This is the uh, number for tonight. Public call box. Right. Bring me 7.30 sharp. Here. Yeah. It says the police are combing London for that van. <laughs> Best of British luck, Tom. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Hey. And the police let you go. Yeah, that's right. And what's the company going to say to all this? They'll fire you, that's what. No, they won't. Good drivers don't grow on trees. That's the same, I don't like it. For a thousand pounds, you like it, all right? Huh. When do we get this fortune? Shut up, will you? <laughs> Two o'clock in the afternoon, and our sun is up already. Have some coffee, Ma. Every day you start in, don't you? Natter, natter, natter. It's so boring. What's up? 
You're not feeling well again? Not hair. It's like a girl. No, leave him alone. Like a woman. You look at him quick, you think he was a woman. Say thank you to your mother. So. No trouble today. Kids have got no respect. No respect. When I was a boy in Warsaw, my papa would have... Respect? Is that what you want? What for? Because of the way you dress, slobbing around half naked all the time? Or because of the way you talk? When I was a boy in Warsaw. It's enough, thing. You've been living here ever since the war, over 20 years, and you still talk like a big dumb Polak. Insults. I don't have to take from a pig-faced brat with hair like a slug. Oh, stop it, stop it. Two minutes together and another rail. You made me sick, the both of you. Shut up. Commander, you must be as aware of our security arrangements here as I am. After all, we've been shippers and receivers of bullion for nearly a hundred years. And there's nothing unusual about this particular shipment? No, perfectly routine. Well, who knew about it? You mean here? Yeah. Myself? Mr. Farish and my partner, my assistant, and, and of course my secretary. Only four people? Yes. Well, if you'll allow me to, I think I'd like to start with your secretary. Oh, just a minute. The young lady who was with me when that shipment was arranged, she's resigned. Oh, really? Why? Health reasons, I believe. She's gone abroad. Do you know where? No, I don't. I, I'm afraid I haven't the slightest idea. So you better check on the secretary. Her name is Jean O'Connor. Famish and Cameron's personnel office will give you the drill. Right. Okatsky's being watched. Uh, hasn't moved out of the house. How's Wilkes getting along with the airport personnel? Oh, being questioned. He'll send you a full report. And nobody's been spending any fancy money, either. The grapevine is quiet. As the tomb. No reports on uh, crucibles sold or stolen. And every PC in London is out looking for that truck. Well, our progress is positively brilliant, isn't it? Well, maybe David will come up with something. He's a team of men out checking on hopefuls. Did you post a letter to Kowski? Mm-hmm. From the post office. He should get it this afternoon. Come and have your tea. Oh, dear. I'll get it, love. Mr. Bailey? Yes? Chief Inspector Keene, Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Can I have a word with you? Yes, of course. Come in. Darling, this is Mr. Keene from Scotland Yard. My wife. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Bailey? Will you have some tea, Mr. Keene? Uh, no, thank you. I won't keep you a second. It's in connection with the uh, Banford Gold robbery. Brilliant, wasn't it? Yes, so brilliant, in fact, that there are perhaps only uh, 25 men in England who could have planned it. Hmm. I would have thought less. Why ask me? You're on the list, Bailey. Mr. Bailey, if you don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. Where were you last night, uh, Mr. Bailey? We went to the cinema. Could you give me the details, please? I'd be happy to. We went out about, uh, what time was it, darling? Oh, 7.15, 7.20. How about that? We went to the theatre. There was a slight misunderstanding about the seats. The uh, manager will remember that. We saw the film and we came home. The manager will remember that, too. Oh. I uh, saw him on the way out. Sure, you won't have a cup of tea? Quite sure, thank you. So you got home around 11.15? Thank you, Bailey. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Take my name off the list then, can't you? Perhaps. Will I talk to the theatre manager? Yes, I remember Mr. Bailey quite clearly. Yes, there was a mistake about his booking. And you're sure he came in at the beginning of the picture and left at the end? Oh, absolutely positive.
Yeah, what you want? You do something for me. Like what, for instance? Go to Liverpool Street Station. What? We got a parcel for me, left luggage office. Okay? Yeah, you're kidding. I'm meeting a gang at the calf. What a fighter? You mean it? Five quid? Sure. Huh? The gang will flip. Don't go blabbing about it, okay? You go straight there, and you come straight back, and keep your trap shut, all right? Yeah, okay, I get it. You don't have to break me arm. Okay, now you... Can't do something right for once in your life, huh? You go straight there, and you talk to nobody, and you come straight home, all right? South of France. Who says crime doesn't pay? Kenneth is in hospital, is he? Or is a bullet? A hernia operation. Yeah. Sustain whilst cracking a safe, no doubt. The Julie. Excuse me. Yes, lad? Gina Connor, the secretary at Faversham Cameron. Now, what about her? Guess who she used to share a flat with. Who? Mrs. Terence Bailey. Aha. How'd you like that? I like it very much. Look, David, now how many times have you been to the cinema? Hundreds, thousands of times. Yes, and how many times have you spoken to the manager when you arrived and then again when you left? Never, it's much too packed. It smells. Check again. Have a word with the porter at Bailey's Block of Flats. Any suspicious characters? Crack down him, David. You've only got five more on your list. Well, thanks. Lem. No, sir, no unusual visitors. You saw them go out last night? Yes, sir, I did. And you noticed nothing unusual? No, sir, I didn't. Mr. Bailey helped madam into the car. But his Natasha case in the boot, got behind the wheel and drove away. Natasha case? A Natasha case? Why would anybody take a Natasha case to the cinema? Why, indeed. What was in it? I wonder. Oh, well, that uh, little detail is the sort of thing that might make a policeman's lot a happy one. You're behaving like a snotty-nosed little boy who didn't get asked to the party. Snotty. your damn neck, you... say on the whole of this truck there's not one single print? Not one, sir. It's been very carefully washed with a strong detergent of some kind, sir. No print, no mud, absolutely clean. I, uh, I found this glove by the waste incinerator at the back. Yeah, they probably all wore them. This truck a ringer for Kowski's. Uh-huh, even to the color. Has Kowski made a move yet? Not yet, been at home all day. What about Bailey? Sitting tight. It must be killing him. We've got to get him to a doctor. We can't risk it. He's liable to die, isn't he? No. How oh, do you know? We're not getting him to a doctor, and that's that. It would wreck the whole caper. We know a quack who's safe. Yeah, passed up a knife wound for me once. Never owned his paper. No doctor, and that's final. When I go out to ring Bailey tonight, I'll get him some medication. Nice too! Show you who's that big dumb polar. Quick, 
Quick, it's too late. Where is it? Is he? No, he's just unconscious. Get some water. Oh. You filthy pooler! Come on. He'll be all right as soon as he gets his breath back. Breathe deeply, darling. That's it. Okay, mister. You can go now. First, Mr. Kurtzky, you're going to tell me where you got all this money. the dot. Accident? How? The molten gold got him in the face. He's in pretty bad shape. No, Dr. Harold. He'll ruin everything. He'll just have to stand it. Okay? When will you be finished? Well, the pot's really working hot now. We should be through by about six tomorrow evening. Right. Ring me here. Same number. Noon tomorrow. On the dot. Okay? All right, bye. Harold? Yeah. Look, tell Frank I'm sorry. Right. Please, uh, get crazy. Frank. Frank. Harold's bringing something back for you. You won't be long. I can't. I can't stand. I know. I can't. We've got to get him to the quickest. It's just not human letting anybody suffer like this. some ointment to ease the pain and a bottle of scotch. Harold, Frank and me have been mates for a long time and I'm telling you, whiskey and ointment just aren't enough. I'm afraid it'll have to do. Who says so? I say so. Well, that's just too bad, because we're taking him to the quack. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, we are. Aren't we, Ace? Yes, we are. You're mad. You'll wreck the whole scheme. No, this quack's okay. He won't talk. Ace, let's get him on his feet. Sorry, boys. Harold, you're acting crazy. Nobody leaves here till tomorrow night. He'll just have to stand it. All right, Harold, drop it. Drop it! Or you get the same as Frank. tonight. Load the van. Tilbury by 11. Sail at dawn. In France by noon tomorrow. Terry, I... I'm worried about Frank. Oh. Frank's a casualty. Part of the risk. Is he badly burnt? Molten gold. A thousand degrees. Can be pretty deadly stuff. Oh, it's horrible. Getting beyond a joke, Inspector. May we come in, please, Mr. Bailey? We're expecting guests. Well, I'm expecting hospitality. What's the explanation for this? What are you after? Stolen property. Stolen property? Uh -huh. Furniture, rugs. That. And now look here. Where'd you get this from, Mr. Bailey? 
What's it got to do with you? Just answer my question. Where'd you get it from? Antique shop on the Fulham Road. Terry. It's all right, darling. Let them finish their act. Got to earn their wages. That looks like the one, is it, Marlon? That's it, all right, sir. I'll check it, will you? All right. One more question, Mr. Bailey. When you went to the films last night, why did you take your attache case with you? Attache case? Yeah, it's odd, isn't it, taking an attache case to the cinema? I didn't. Oh. Well, it's my mistake, then. Sorry to disturb you. Marlo? Phyllis, we're leaving. What? Right now, this second, before they expect it. But why? And I've nothing packed. Well, grab a coat. Come on. Terry, we can't. Now, look. They want to panic us. Want us to make a move. They'll have a man watching this building inside three minutes if they haven't got one now. Now, don't argue. Come on. I think it worked. We've got him rattled. Look that way. He might try to run for it. He's driving a light grey 3.8 Jag. Registration number VUF 73. I'll check with the man covering the back entrance. Right. Wait a minute. This one. Tell me, I'm frightened. Now you get hold of yourself. Get in the back and lie low until we're clear of the building. Remember me, Doc? You patched me up once. Ace Leonard. What's the matter with him? Burn, something awful. Bring him in. Put him on that. Take it easy, Frank. Take it easy. The doctor will fix you up right as rain. What happened? He was burned. I can see that. What with? Molten lead. Yeah. Yes, molten lead. And you fix him up good. A 50 quid. What's that? Morphine. For the pain? Obviously. Doc, we've got to take him back with us. You what? This man has to go to hospital. Mm -hmm. Can't do that, Doc. Mm -hmm. He's very badly mm -hmm. burned. Oh, we know that. We've got to be on the move tomorrow night. No hospital. No, you just do the best you can. Here. Hold this. Listen. Where are you going? I'll have my wife make him some strong tea. Put the kettle on, will you, dear? I want some strong, sweet tea. Yeah. Phone the police.
the hell are you doing? I was on the telephone. Mr. I know who you were telephoning. Oh, it's my wife. Then you do just what you're told. Both of you, get in the kitchen and make the tea. And you take care of Frank. You, Terry? Yes. Hello, Lance, is it? Where is everybody? What's the matter with your face? Len and Ace took Frank to the doctors. I tried to stop them. You fools! Where have they taken him? Someone Ace knows. Near here. Have the cops on us by morning? What are we going to do? We're going to pull out. Harold, we'll load all the gold that's cast. And we'll get out tonight. Right. Right. Help him to lift him, will you? Under the back. Give us hand, will you? Nice and easy. Raise him steady. How long are you going to be, Doc? About 20 minutes. Kowski, if you think for one second, one second, that I'll believe a story like that, you're crazy. The boy tell me he find the money. I don't believe him, so... I tried to make him tell me where he got it. It was a payoff, and you know it, for decoy work done at Banford Airport. Mr. Gideon, I'm an honest man. I tell you, the boy, find the money. That's a 999. Three of the gold robbers have been found at a doctor's house in Holloway. Doc, will you hurry up? to live on for a very long time. It couldn't have been far from here, Commander. They came on foot, and that chap, he couldn't have walked more than a few hundred yards. Lemmy, on every square inch this place searched. Right, sir. And tell him to look out for a crucible, one that's still warm. Uh, yes. Is Bailey still being watched? Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll bring him in for questioning. We'll see how he reacts when he's faced with his friends. Right. Nobody here. What? How could you have missed him? I don't know, so I'm sorry. All right, what are you going to go? Let's search the place. Right. Still warm. There's some gold left in it. Yeah, they must have left in a hurry. I wonder what they were casting. Well, these. These are black. isn't paint, it's bitumen. And what's that smell? Diesel? Yeah, I think it is. Wait a minute, Lemmy, I've seen bars like this before. Ballast, ballast for motor yachts. Well, that would explain how they plan to get the gold out of the country. Yes, yes, buy a motor yacht, take out the ballast and replace it with bars of gold. All we have to do is find the yachts. That's all. Well, you can wind things up here. Neither of those two villains will say a thing. They've both clammed up. Here, Sonny. What? A grocery bill. 32 pounds, 16 shillings. No, yeah, well, so what? Well, why should anybody living in London's West End buy 32 pounds, 16 shillings worth of groceries from a store in Tilbury? Tilbury? 
Well, David, that's it. That's where they keep the motor yacht. But where the hell is she? We're ready to cast off. She'll be back soon. Oh, yes, indeed, I do remember. Yes, it was a large order. A lady and gentleman together. They were driving in a Jaguar. Does the man look like this? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, that's him, I'm sure. Thank you. Sir, that's her. The one with the parcels? Yes. You sure? Positive. What's she doing now? She's getting into a cab. Come on. Accessory to a murder charge. Look, don't be a fool, Bailey. You're finished. We've got them all. Ace, Frank, Len, and Kowski. Yeah, well, you won't get me. I can't smoke. Are they using the gold as ballast? Yes, it's... Down there. The end of the rainbow, eh? 